Hi, and welcome to our Access MBA live event with ESCP Europe, direct from the ESCP campus in Paris, France. Today will be a 60-minute interactive Q&A session, which will allow you, the viewer, to find out all about this international, multi-format executive MBA program. My name is Cecilia, and I'll be here to ask questions to our panelists. Please send your questions to live at accessmba.com, and we'll do our best to get to them. Without any further ado, I would like to get started and have our panelists introduce themselves and tell us about their role here at ESCP Europe. Hello, uh, my name is Evelyne Mazalon. I'm a sales uh, director in a publishing house in Paris. I work in Paris currently. And uh, I am uh, actually a stu uh, EMBA student at ESCP Europe and from the class of 2016, so it means that it's almost uh, over for me. I start a couple of uh, months ago. My name is Stefan Schmidt. I'm a professor of international management and strategic management at our Berlin campus. And at the same time, I'm the academic dean of the executive MBA program here at ESCP Europe. Hi, my name is Sahil, um, just like Evelyn. Um, I'm doing my EMBA here. Um, I'm in, from the chemical industry uh, and I'm um, in a company responsible for asset management. And just like Evelyn, I will be uh, complete uh, finish in the next couple of months. Okay, thank you all for being here. Uh, thank you to our web audience as well who have some questions for us. I'm going to get started with some questions that we've prepared. Uh, my first question will be for uh, Stefan, and, um, and I'm sure that Evelyn and Sahil also have some answers to this question. So my question is, what sets the ESCP EMBA apart from other executive MBA programs? I think the first and most important point is that we at ESCP Europe, we have several campuses. We have campuses where all of our students can either follow their core courses or their electives. And this makes the program a truly European, a truly international program. And this already leads to a second important characteristic. We value diversity. We value diversity in terms of nationality, but also in many other uh, dimensions, such as functional backgrounds, such as industries, but also such as personalities. And uh, I would stop with these two points and perhaps see what our uh, current uh, students would like to add. Yeah, I definitely agree with Stefan. Uh, it's true that uh, the ESCP uh, EMBA is definitely completely international uh, from the point of view of the different uh, uh, members of the, the participants because we all uh, come from different countries. It's more than 25 uh, countries different, so it's definitely international. And it's true that for me, I follow up the Paris track. So it means that I took all the co-courses here on the Paris campus, but I had the opportunity as well to follow all the seminars abroad and as well all the elective. So it's definitely a very uh, worldwide experience. Okay. Just as a final point, I mean, I think you both have pointed out the most important topics. For me, what was the most interesting aspect here at the ESCP was um, what uh, the professor here just mentioned was the, the diverse background of the students. Um, coming together in one class with people coming from different backgrounds really uh, stimulates you and makes you really look for innovative ideas to the different problems which are addressed in the, co in the courses. Okay, super. Um, and maybe uh, this question is also for the three of you. Um, first to Stefan. Um, who would you say is the ideal candidate for this type of program? You mentioned diversity, but can you tell us maybe the types of candidates you're looking for? Clearly, I think it's not one typical student. It's not one typical participant. As you just mentioned, we value diversity. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, I would say there are some things our participants really have in common. They all really want to progress in their career. They all have already substantial professional work experience, but they would like to go on. And they all are ambitious, but ambition in a different way. Some really want to make it to the next step of the career ladder, while others would perhaps just like to change their position in a different industry and not climbing up. But all want to take something out of the MBA program. And that's, I think, something all our participants share. 
And again, as before, probably Evelyn and Sahil would like uh, to share their experiences. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> I could give my, my own example. Mm -hmm. uh, what I was looking for when I uh, decided to, to, uh, to start with this executive MBA, it was the fact that uh, I was in a moment in my career that I already made different steps, but um, I had a feeling that I need uh, to be reinforced uh, in different uh, fields, and that's why <clears throat> the core courses, w which are very, uh, very wide, very uh, diverse, uh, but it brings you all the basic you really need when you want to be at a top level in a, um, in a company. And in the same time, time with the elective, you can choose and you can give a focus on a specific topics or a specific area. And so it's a good balance, I mean, in, a, in order to get all the knowledge, the basic knowledge, and to give some uh, emphasis on some specific uh, topics, if you wish. Mm -hmm. And why did you choose the, the course, Sayo? What was, it, what was it for you that... So for me, um, um, I was at a point in my career where I had, uh, I'm an engineer from mm -hmm. training, so I had moved qu quite quickly up the engineering ladder, um, and I was very coming very, in a daily basis, coming in contact with the normal business problems. Uh, which as an engineer not trained to solve. Uh, so I, that's the reason why I really chose to do an MBA so that I could increase my tool set and really uh, give a more holistic approach to problem solving. And to your question, um, what type of students mm -hmm. are really, uh, uh, should really take part here? I think what is really important is the work experience because a lot of the problems in the classes, mm -hmm. a lot of the, the, the discussions which we have in the classes are based on real life experiences that the students are bringing on the table. Yes. So I think that is very, very important. Okay, um, and, and maybe Stefan can tell us, uh, after graduation, can you maybe cite some examples of what people have gone on to do after they've completed the program at ESCP Europe? Perhaps I start again, and then uh, <laughs> Evelyn and Sahil will join me. Uh, we see very different uh, uh, developments after the executive MBA. Some of our graduates, they stay in their company, but they move to the next career ladder, the next step in the career ladder. Mm -hmm. Some others, they really use the executive MBA to completely change their career. Some of them, they even create a new business. Some others, they uh, go to a different industry or to a different function. Um, again, uh, some others may say, okay, I'm still in my same position for the next two, three years, but then it's the time to move. So we see a really completely different uh, career path after uh, uh, our uh, completion of the program. Mm -hmm. um, I would ask actually a modified version of that question to, to Evelyn and Sahil. Mm -hmm. how, have, how has your career expectation changed or how have you seen yourself progress through, as you've been going through the program? Where do you see yourself going afterwards? Well, I think um, at the moment, I'm still a student of the EMBA, so uh, I'm still on, on my current uh, job. Uh, but uh, for sure, I gain uh, insurance. I mean, I'm more confident, definitely. And uh, I know that uh, I will look for, for new opportunities that I would have never expect before, because I would have think, no, I'm not so, so good, or no, I can't pretend to do that. Now, you know, I could feel very, very comfortable to apply for a much more higher position. Mm -hmm. So as far as I go, um, by me, the career has already taken a turn already. So um, I'll be basically leaving the company where I'm at the moment, and I'll be moving into strategic consulting. Um, so for me, the, um, as Evelyn also sort of mentioned, it, the horizon has really opened up. So, was that a direct result of uh, Yes, it was. I mean, it was really being at the ESCP, using the alumni network, which is here, getting in contact with people. Uh, it was actually this university which opened the doors uh, to this position. So, yeah. Okay, that's very interesting. Um, okay, and now maybe you can tell us a little bit about, you mentioned that the campus uh, is in several locations globally. Can you maybe tell us about these campuses, why you chose to open a campus there um, in the different cities? Clearly, ESCP Europe uh, has now six campuses, and uh, it's not the executive MBA having opened these campuses, it's the school. 
uh, and all of them are really in urbane cities in Europe. And that's one of our values. We want to be really where the uh, business takes place, where political decisions are made, where also societal movements can be uh, seen. And that's uh, the reason why the school opened the campuses in these cities. And we in the Executive MBA program, we benefit from this. Because it's not only our uh, classes taking place there, it's also much more. For instance, it's company visits. It's, for instance, discussion sessions with politicians. It can be uh, around tables with uh, societal and non-governmental organizations. So we believe that it's a clear advantage to be in these major cities and not to be just in one city, such as Paris or Berlin, but to be in several cities and by that bringing different perspectives to our participants. The German perspective, the French perspective, the Italian perspective, the Spanish perspective, and the UK perspective. And as you know, recently with our campus in uh, Warsaw, also the Polish perspective. Um, have, have you, as uh, students, had the opportunity to have to spend time at the other campuses as well? Yeah, sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about your experience in the other campuses and which of the programs that you're following? Maybe each of you has a different program. Mm -hmm. So me, as I said previously, uh, I took all the core courses here on the campus of, of Paris, but I have the opportunity to go in the uh, London campus, the Torino campus, the uh, Madrid campus to took the elective. Okay. And how much time did you spend in those other uh, campuses as part of the program? Well, it depends. Uh, it could be in, in London, it was almost one week because <clears throat> I took different elective. And uh, in Madrid, it was only two days because I took only one elective. So it's your uh, choice that you will spend the full week or only a couple of days. Okay. So I'm from the London Berlin track. Um, so as part of my core courses, I was in Berlin and I was in London. And just because I chose certain electives in which I was very interested in, I got the opportunity then uh, to come to Paris again and to be in uh, in Madrid. Um, I'm actually doing right now my electives in Paris and I'll be here uh, for, an for the entire week. Okay, so, great. Yeah. And for those who may be listening and don't know what the differences are, can you tell us a little briefly about the different types of programs, so London Berlin track okay. versus another track? Yeah. yeah. Perhaps I start by giving you first an overview of the four major pillars of the entire program. Pillar number one are the core courses. That's really the fundamentals in all management and business subjects such as strategy, finance, marketing. So that's the first pillar. And here, later on, we will talk about the tracks. But before I continue with the tracks, let me explain the other three pillars. Pillar number two are the electives. Evelyn and Sahil already mentioned some of them. Uh, every participant chooses 10 out of 40 electives. And these electives are offered throughout Europe. And it's your choice, the participant's choice, which electives you take and at which campus you take them. The third pillar of the program are our international seminars. Three of them, they are in Europe, in Paris, in Madrid, in Brussels, and two are outside Europe. One in the United States and the other one in one of the so-called emerging markets either in uh, Brazil or in India or in China. And the fourth pillar, that's our international consulting project. Because during the program, all our participants, they work in groups of four or five participants on a specific problem, which is a problem of a company. Now, I was a little bit long, but I wanted to explain the overall structure. And now I come back to the first element, the co-courses, because that brings us back to the question, how is this organized? We have different tracks. Evelyn, she mentioned the Paris track. In this track, you have all your co-courses in Paris. Then we offer the Madrid track. Here you have all your co-courses in Madrid. We have the Torino track with all the co-courses in Torino. We have the Berlin London track. That is Sahil's track. He had the co-courses in Berlin and in London. And now we come to one track we haven't mentioned, which is the most European of all tracks. It's what we call the itinerant track. And here you have all your core courses spread across the five campuses we uh, have traditionally. So it means Paris, London, Berlin, Torino, 
and Madrid. And by that, you really see that you can take the track which is the most suitable to you, either because you have an interest for specific countries and places, or because you like also specific format, because some of them are more offered in a blocked way, and some others are a little bit more spread. Perhaps you can later on share your experiences with the different tracks, and by that tell some prospects more about mm -hmm. what perhaps they can expect from each of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you have anything uh, to add to that. Yeah, I think I could uh, add the point. Uh, that, that the fact that executive MBA at uh, ESCP Europe is very flexible. Uh, it's their own uh, participant who choose the track, the elective, so it means you could uh, fix it um, uh, connected with your own uh, schedule at work, for instance, or, or if you want to, to, to dedicate only a, a couple of days. Uh, each month, for instance, or on the contrary, uh, you will have a full week. So it's very, very flexible, and for sure, uh, you could uh, find uh, the, the rhythm uh, which corresponds to you. That's great. Very customized. Um, I want to just remind our, our uh, web audience that they can send in their questions. I'm going to get to those questions in a little while. Uh, if you have questions, please send them to live, L-I-V-E, at accessmba.com. Um, my next question is um, is for Stefan. Maybe it's actually the case for one of one of uh, the participants who's here. Um, are many of your students sponsored by their company, corporate sponsored on this MBA? If I look at our figures for the last years, we could say the following: around twenty five percent of our participants are fully sponsored. That means their company pays the entire fees for the program and some of them even additional travel fees or even accommodation. Mm -hmm. Another 25%, they are partially corporate sponsored. Mm -hmm. That means the company pays uh, a certain percentage of uh, the executive MBA fees, very often perhaps half of them. And uh, then we have around 50% who pay the executive MBA on their own. But even for them, it does not mean that they really have to pay the full fees. First of all, because we also offer some scholarships uh, for uh, different types of scholarships, for instance, for entrepreneurs or for uh, participants from non-governmental organizations or small and medium-sized companies or participants from emerging markets. And another uh, possibility is that today you can really get uh, uh, loans from banks at a very, uh, let's say, uh, a low interest rate. And that helps also many of the remaining 50% of our participants to really invest in their career. And was it, was it the case for any of you that you were sponsored by your company or did you decide to do this uh, on your own? No, for me, I paid only half of uh, the price mm -hmm. and my company had me for the rest. Mm -hmm. And how did you know it was the right time for you in your career to do uh, an executive MBA? Well, how can I know? Um, actually, you know, I um, when I enter uh, when I start to, to work for my company, <clears throat> it was something like ten years ago, and I start with a position as an export manager, and then after a couple of years, I had the opportunity to go a bit further to to make a, a step, and I became the sales director. And then, it was something like five years later, I realized, okay, now, you know, what can I do? The next step will be general manager, the CEO, and do I feel strongly enough to take this position in, inside my company or outside my company? And that's when I realized, okay, I, I need to be more, more confident. I need to reinforce uh, my my knowledge, my my tools, my and that's why I decided to uh, to start with the uh, executive MBA. Mm -hmm. And is your company based here in France, or is it yes. an international company? Well, actually, the company is based in France, in mm -hmm. Paris, but uh, eighty percent of our turnover is made abroad. So it means that uh, we are definitely an international company, mm -hmm. and I travel already a lot for my company, actually. Mm -hmm. So the international aspect was important for you as well in the MBA, I guess. Yeah, of course, because it belongs to my life since now 20 years. I mean, before this company, uh, I worked abroad in different countries. So 
it was a part of me, so it was logical that the in executive MBA we choose has to be this international part because it's it's me. It's mm -hmm. and I really wanted to continue in that uh, in that area. And maybe, Sada, can you tell us about your choice? Why did you decide at this moment to do the executive MBA? So as far as, as my, the sponsorship goes, for example, I'm completely sponsored by my mm -hmm. company. Um, why did I choose? Um, I, it was a big, it was a long decision in my brain because um, there was a lot of workload. Uh, there's been this pressure, private pressure with children and everything. Mm -hmm. So it was, a, um, it, was a, it was a decision which I just made. I just said, I have to do it. And I just plunged into it. Um, and I think that's probably the right approach also. Um, you just have to make a decision that this is something which you need to do. This is where you want to do it. And you just go for it. Um, why did I choose ESCP? It's the same reason as Evelyn, actually. Um, if you look at my background, I've lived in very different countries. Um, I've been moving around also a lot in my job. I've, I've lived in Belgium, in Spain, in the States. So, um, this international aspect and this mobility part in the program really suited my personality. So um, that was the reason why I actually chose the SCP then. Okay. I actually have a question uh, from the web from Jorn, I think is uh, how you pronounce this name. So it's for both Evelyn and Sahil, and it's what was your uh, premier focus on uh, joining the MBA, and what is your expectation concerning your job and career development in the future? So we talked about right now, but what was your expectation? I mean... Uh, for the future with the MBA? Well, actually, um, at the moment, right now, I don't know yet, of mm -hmm. course, but uh, as far as I could see from uh, some, uh, some other participants, and when I see the gap they are doing, because some of them already changed during, during the, the executive MBA, even if, if they have not yet finished, but they already changed, and you could see that the gap could be huge in terms of position, and in terms of salary. So, of course, for me, you know, I don't know yet which will be the gap, but uh, I have plenty of example around myself uh, of people, of friends of mine uh, from the executive MBA uh, who were uh, sales director, as I am currently, and who became CEO of the company. So, it's an example, and for sure, it's reality. So, this is the kind of, of gap of your career you could do. Mm -hmm. So, I can talk about myself. Um, uh, when, before I joined um, uh, ESCP, um, I had two goals. They were qualitative and quantitative. Um, I was expecting a certain increase in my salary over a certain period of time after I finished my MBA. And of course, um, I was also hoping that uh, from my job profile, I get a more broader job profile. I can move more into general management. And I must say that even before I've completed my course, um, I've reached both my goals. So I'll be changing my companies. Um, I'll be moving from middle management into senior management in a consulting organization, and I will be doing less of technical work, um, that is more analysis, and I'll be doing more of um, acquisition, business acquisition, business growth. So what my goals were set, say, uh, when I started this course, I've already met them. So as Evelyn said, this is reality. I mean, if you take part in the course, there is a payback. Super. Yeah. My next question is, is for Stefan. Um, would you say that there is a specific focus? Um, some, for example, MBAs uh, say that entrepreneurship is their focus. Some say innovation is their focus. What would you say is the focus for ESCP Europe in terms of... Uh, yeah. Personally, and also from the perspective of the school, an executive MBA is a generalist program. The best executive MBA programs in the world are generalist in nature. That's why you do an MBA. If you want to do really a specialized program, you usually opt for a specialized master. That's why I would clearly say we are a generalist executive MBA. What makes us really different is what we already mentioned. It's the international dimension. It's the intercultural dimension. It's also a lot of teamwork we have in our uh, courses. But we wouldn't say that we are specializing in a specific function or in a specific industry. It's a generalist management program we offer, and that's in line with what usually an executive MBA should be. Okay, super. Um, I have one question from the web, and it's from Francisco in Mexico. Um, so you mentioned uh, work experience. Um, he's asking actually about age. He's like, is age important uh, to take the executive MBA program? Um, can you tell us about the age ranges for this program? 
for those who are listening. Yeah. Uh, interestingly enough, during the last years, every year the average age was 37. Three years in a row. We didn't do anything specific, but 37 is the average. And now if it comes to the range, it's usually between 30 and 50. Sometimes it's a little bit more than 50. For instance, this year we have two participants being 20, uh, 52 and 53. But this can give you an idea. What is even more important than the age is really what Evelyn already said and Sahil, it's the experience. You shouldn't come to an uh, executive MBA program without professional experience or with short professional experience. That's why we say at least five years of professional experience, ideally even more. And that's why the average here is usually 10 or 11 years of professional experience. And that makes it much easier for you to really take benefit mm. from the courses. My own course, the strategy course, is a typical example. Uh, if you are too young, if you are not experienced enough, you cannot really talk about all the dimensions of strategy. Okay, I also teach strategy to master's students and bachelor's students, but it's a completely different thing. Talking about strategy with executives is really something else because they all come with the strategy of their company, with the failures and the success stories. And uh, we really enjoy working with people who have experiences and who bring these experiences to the classroom. And that brings me to another important dimension of any executive MBA. It's really the exchange and the networking. It's not just me as a professor teaching our participants. It's also each participant teaching another participant with his worldview, with his experience, with his examples or her examples. And uh, this exchange of perspective, this exchange of experience, and also later on the entire networking is an important uh, dimension of any executive MBA program in the world, which is really a good executive MBA program. Can I add to that? Um, um, and you notice that also in the way the courses are structured, the way the group works are done in the classes, it's a lot of group work. So you have to uh, talk to other people, you have to talk to people from other tracks, so it's you eventually build your networks. Mm. Okay. During all the, the half, one and a half year, you will have the opportunity to work with everyone almost. Uh, so it means that you will be in contact in very different field, mm -hmm. uh, very different profile. So for sure, it will be definitely a rich experience. Mm -hmm. Thanks. My next question will be uh, for Evelyn, actually. Um, and so we talked about diversity, international diversity. We talked about ages uh, and experience. But can you maybe tell us about uh, women in the MBA? Because uh, I want to know how, how ESCP uh, welcomes women. Yeah, they are very welcome, <laughs> believe me. Um, Actually, there are, I think, uh, in the point of view of uh, numbers, I think we are more or less 25%, I think, of women. You, exactly. Yeah. Uh, this year it's 25, we already had 28, it depends on the year, yeah. but that's the typical percentage. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, actually there are uh, some uh, el specific elective, I just attended an elective uh, today and yesterday about women leadership, and uh, there are a network as well, the women uh, uh, network, and definitely it's, um, it's f for sure, it's um, it's definitely a very interesting exchange, and you could feel that to be a, a woman and to have a, a successful career and to to have this wonderful experience of uh, EMBA, it's definitely possible. And as well to be a mother, because there are a lot of mothers. I am personally a mother as well, and so it's definitely the proof that uh, it's not a problem to be a woman and for to to do this kind of uh, of program. Okay, great. Um, anything to add to that? I guess uh, Evelyn would be the best one to, to answer that question. Um, you mentioned that it's a very flexible program. Uh, so one of the questions that we had was, how can a busy executive integrate the program? Um, and how just how flexible is the program for, for people who are working? Maybe Stefan or, or Sahil can uh, talk a little bit about that. Perhaps no. this time you would like to start because you have the challenge <laughs> okay. of combining that. The yes. professor has a different perspective. Yeah. If you would like to start. So, just, yeah, mm -hmm. so, I mean, 
the program has certain boundary conditions. You have to be in, inside the boundary conditions. But um, what you notice is that, for example, if you need to switch around your electives because your work does not allow it, the, the, the administration, the professors are very flexible there. They understand that. They help you. Um, so there's a lot of support within the program. Uh, but the question is, how does a busy executive fit this into his daily? I think the most important thing there is it's all about time management. Um, and as I said was before, that once you have really set your mind that I want to do this, you have to really manage your time. And it's doable because there is so much support here at the ESCP. Um, it, is, it, is a, it is a very flexible program. Mm -hmm. And maybe I could add uh, the fact that uh, me, I start the executive MBA as a GMP student. Maybe I can explain yes. what is mm -hmm. a GMP. Um, it's a general management program and it's uh, during the first year uh, you attend only the co-courses and then you will continue with the seminar, with the elective, with the ICP and so it's longer but it's uh, more flexible uh, for me at least because I was traveling a lot for my, for my job so it was very very difficult to do everything in uh, one and a half year so that's why uh, we decided with my company that I will start with, a, ex with a GMP, the General Man Management Program and then to continue with uh, mm. the other so if we uh, really summarize mm -hmm. what uh, we just got as an experience from our participants, you have really first the decision whether you want to do the entire program in either 18 months or 30 months. And this is the first way of how to really make it suited to your personal and professional mm -hmm. career. If you want to do it really quicker, it's the 18-month version, mm -hmm. that's yours. Mm -hmm. If you want to take more time, it's Evelyn's version, and it would be 30 months. And the second possibility really to adapt it is by choosing a specific track. As we mentioned before, mm -hmm. uh, there are different tracks, and some of them are offered in a way that you come to classes at the end of the week, mm -hmm. on Thursday, Friday, and yes. Saturday. Whereas some other tracks are organized in a way that you have less weeks, but if you come to school, then it's an entire week from Monday to Saturday. Saturday. That's, for instance, the Berlin-London mm -hmm. track. Mm -hmm. And this is more intense. But you can choose which of the versions is more adapted to your career and also to your profession, to your personal life at home, your family life, your partner, and so on. Great. My next question is... Um, what do you think, and, and this is for all of you, what do you think is the added value really of an executive M MBA today? Um, what, what does it add to your, to your CV? And, and mm -hmm. you, you mentioned some things before, but just uh, if you could like, describe. Mm. Go ahead. So uh, for me personally, um, I'm noticing that when I work at, at solving certain problems, certain business problems, I'm giving more holistic answers. I'm not only looking at the technical part as an engineer, I'm looking at the finance part. I'm, I'm looking at the profitability analysis. I'm understanding what all information is coming from marketing now. So even the answers which I give back to my senior management are fully more integrated. And in today's world where change is constant, there's always something changing outside in the market, within the company, This an MBA which really provides you the, the, the basis of business really helps you react quickly to change and to basically come up with the solutions. Yeah, yeah, and I could say that um, you arrive before the MBA. You arrive with your own uh, your own career mm -hmm. and your own experience in one field. For me, it was the sales department. And uh, after uh, the MBA, you are definitely able to talk uh, like equal. I would say with the law department, with the financial department, with the marketing department, and with the supply chain department, because you all have the knowledge and the tools in order to be there. there. Of course, you are not an expert. You are not. You don't don't become an expert in financial or and I don't know which uh, which subject. But at least you are able to talk and to understand. And I think it's very good to have this uh, very um, complete view. Of, uh, of the company. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I would say clearly this is one of the main characteristics yes. of an executive MBA that you get the overall view. 
most of the participants, such as Evelyn, they work in a specific sector, mm -hmm. and perhaps for 10 years. Yes. And that's why mm -hmm. then they need some opening. Yeah. And some of them also have a completely different background. They're engineers, mm -hmm. and they never studied finance or marketing before. They perhaps worked a little bit on that in their job, but now they need a more formal mm -hmm. way of getting trained in that. And I would add something else, which is important. It's also the skills dimension. Within an executive MBA, we really do everything to give our participants the skills they need for the world today, but also for the world tomorrow. The leadership skills, for instance, the communication skills, also creativity or innovation. And we believe that these skills are also something which are an important added value. And uh, another added value is the network, the network you get from the class in which you are, but also the network you get from the alumni association. Yeah, For instance, here at ESCP Europe, our executive MBA alumni alone count around 4,000 graduates and the entire alumni network is 45,000. And there are many possibilities to really get into touch with them, to learn from them, to ask questions to them. And I think that's another important aspect of uh, an executive MBA program. Mm -hmm. It actually works very well because we had a question about it from the web. Um, so it was, can I would like you to share more details about your alumni network and career paths. Is there a specific field of work uh, in which your alumni are particu particularly very successful? Is there a specific field that people go into after they? No. Um, again, as I said before, the executive MBA is a very generalist program. And it means that in the program, we have people from so many different industries and functions that it would be wrong to say we are particularly good in uh, training managers in the consulting industry or in the banking industry or in the automotive industry. We have participants from all of them, but we are not saying that we are specialized <laughs> in an industry or in a function. And the same is true for the former graduates, our alumni. They are in all areas of business, they're in all functions, and some of them are even outside business. And that's also one sign of the openness. Some people may also be in more governmental positions or in uh, NGOs, or some may be in education. So it's not all about business and management. And even in our courses, it's not all about business and management. For instance, some of the electives, you may do them at the Hertie School of Governance in Berlin, we have a cooperation with. Those cells, for instance, being interested in the interplay between business and government, they may attend electives to think about, for instance, civil society or the role of business in society, just mm -hmm. to add another dimension, which is perhaps important for some of the prospects. Mm -hmm. And what about networking with, uh, with alumni? Um, how does that take place? Can you cite any examples of how you've been in touch with other Yeah, alumni? of course. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, for instance, mm -hmm. <laughs> there was a network for, uh, for uh, the current student, but as well for the alumni. So uh, there is some uh, event organized by the alumni, and it could take place here in Paris, but in different campus as well, uh, in London, in Berlin, so everywhere, actually. And it's a very informal, it could be a very informal event only to have a drink and to, to exchange, to meet people, or it could be as well to attend a conference or to, um, yeah, to, to, ch to have a petit déjeuner, for breakfast, instance, yeah. breakfast. Uh, so there are different uh, events and it's very uh, active uh, network, definitely. So in my case, um, I mean, just like Evelyn, I, there's a lot of opportunities to meet uh, people in, in, in informal conditions. But uh, for me, I, I, took, I went online to the alumni mm -hmm. network and it was very, very interesting that how proactive people were. I just put in some, some information that I'm looking for some guidance as far as my CV goes. I want to move in this direction. And within three, four days, there were a couple of people who I talked to, they coached me, they sorted my CV out. So it's not only that alumni mm -hmm. is big in ESCP, what I find is that alumni is also very responsive. Yeah. So um, I think that's the big, big advantage. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
I'm just going to remind people because we have about 20 minutes left. So if you still have questions, send them to live at accessmba.com. I have two questions uh, waiting here. Uh, this question is from some uh, a tool, um, and it's a question that we we often get in uh, in the MBA world. So can you tell us about the ranking of ESCP ERP? Are you ranked at the accreditations? Perhaps can you tell us a little bit more, Stefan? Yeah. First of all, when it comes to the rankings, we are one of those business schools having re really the triple crown, so ASCSB, Equus, and AMBA. When it comes to specific rankings, we are very proud uh, that in uh, the Financial Times rankings, we are now uh, number 13 worldwide. And in a mainly US American dominated world, this is really a position where we are very, very happy. But let me say, it's not all about rankings. This makes us proud, but uh, it's our participants whom we are even more proud of. Uh, if next year we are not number 13, but number 18, it wouldn't make a big change. It's really those who study at ESCP Europe and those who later on stand for ESCP Europe, whom we are proud of. And that's um, very important to us also when we do the selection. When we have our selection interviews, we are really looking for uh, the personality fit. It is really important that the person is uh, in line with the values of ESCP Europe. For instance, uh, the humane values we have. Uh, and uh, we try to implement these values also in our teaching and in all our actions. Okay, thanks very much. Um, and we have a question from uh, Jorn who sent us a question earlier and he sent us another one. He says, why should I choose ESCP uh, instead of another MBA program available? What would you say would make the difference with ESCP? And that could be for anybody mm -hmm. because you had that to make that choice yourself. Yeah, so. Of <laughs> so for me, what, uh, why, why I chose uh, ESCP Europe for my MBA? It was for different reasons. Uh, first, it was this international exposure, for sure, because it was something fundamental for me. And then I participate to, uh, to different, uh, different uh, meeting, information meeting. And what I could see from, uh, from this meeting, it was definitely what said uh, Stefan, the human feeling we could feel. Of course, we are in a business school, we are in the best business school of the world, but it doesn't mean that we are the best uh, of the world. It's, it means that, okay, we, we, we have to, to improve every day and uh, we have to share and we have to, there is definitely a, a very, very uh, good atmosphere and very, um, very helpful and uh, caring. And, uh, and I think this is uh, the value of, uh, of the SCP and what we want to share. So for me, um, I think um, for me the main reason was uh, or is uh, the, uh, the professors. Um, what I liked about the ESC or what I really, really like about the ESCP is how hands-on the professors are. I'll give you an example for myself. I had one course. I submitted my homework uh, and got a grade. And I wanted to really understand what was the reason behind the grade. Why didn't I get full points or whatever? And the professor took time from his busy schedule. He took one hour. He sat down with me at a telephone conference and we went through the calculations. And then he explained to me how I could better the, the grade. So there's a lot of hands-on approach. You can also come with your business problems which you have in your companies and ask for suggestions. And they really do give you guidance. So, um, yeah, hmm. that's the added value, I guess, by ESCP. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and to, to come back to uh, a message which probably you heard already several times, uh, it's also because of the truly international and truly intercultural dimension that ESCP Europe is different from many other schools. Some other schools may send you to another seminar in the US. Okay, but this is not the same as having five campuses, now even a sixth one. It is not the same as having really more than 30 nationalities in the class. It's not the same having professors from so many different nationalities. So the international and intercultural dimension mm -hmm. is really something which makes us unique. Well, um, that's actually good as well that you mentioned that. Um, one of my questions was also about the faculty and the teaching staff. So diversity in the student group, but I guess in the faculty as well. Can you tell us about where your professors come from uh, on the program? Yeah. 
Um, overall, uh, ESCP Europe has around 130 uh, full faculty members. And uh, if we take uh, these 130, not all of them teach in the executive MBA, but within the 130, we have around uh, 25 different nationalities. So also within the faculty, we have the same element as within the students. It's uh, diversity. But again, it's not only diversity in terms of nationality. It's also diversity in terms of the profile. Some of the professors are really fully academic. They spent their entire career in academia, but nevertheless, they make the bridge to the practice, otherwise they wouldn't teach in the MBA. Some other professors, however, first had a professional career and only later on joined us in teaching. So this is just an example to show that also in the faculty, we have different types of professors. And I think this makes it a rich experience for our participants. It's not one standard type of professor we offer. Great. I have a question coming uh, from the web, and it's something we haven't addressed yet. Uh, it's about um, applying and admissions and things like that. So it's a question from Christina. She says, am I able to reapply if I don't get in the first time? Maybe we can also give Christina some tips um, for uh, getting admitted and some tips from people who've actually been admitted into the program for reapplying. So first of all, can someone reapply if they've already been denied? To so that's perhaps a question for me. Yeah. <laughs> yes, somebody who has not been admitted can reapply the year after or even two years after. And uh, without any uh, problem, he has the same chances the next year. However, it's even not so often the case. Why? Because uh, those people who are not admitted, we explain them really in detail why they are not admitted. And very often, it's really that they should not choose an executive MBA or that we advise them even that they should perhaps not choose our executive MBA because it's perhaps not the right choice for them. And they would be better having a totally different program, perhaps even not an executive MBA. So clearly the answer is yes, you can reapply, but it's not so often the case that people uh, will do that because they will then get our advice to do often something else. Mm -hmm. okay. Any advice uh, in the application process that you can give to someone who's a, going, thinking about applying? Well, I think the most uh, important thing is to, to show your motivation and to explain why you want to do a, an executive MBA. It's all a question of personality, as we mentioned. And of course, it's your skills. Of course, it's your background, your professional experience. Of course, all of that is important uh, because you need that to, uh, to apply for the executive MBA at ESCP Europe. But it's definitely a question of who you are and uh, to show during the, the interview, uh, definitely to show who, who you are and why you want to, uh, to be a part of uh, that uh, wonderful experience. Okay. Um, I, I think the only thing which I can add is that um, during the interview, what I remember was probably very important was um, I got kept, kept asking uh, what added value do I bring to the class? And I think that's something which adds to your personality, which you really need to think about before you get into this program, is what added value do you bring to the class? Because that's really the basis of the discussions which we have in the lectures. Okay. Um, I have an, one more question from the web right now. Um, and, and we already know the answer to this. Are there any online programs, or is, it, is there a way to do a program blended? It's someone who is from the Middle East and would find it hard to travel a lot. So it... Is it possible to do uh, the program uh, working in the Middle East and, and still be part of ESCP? Perhaps there are two dimensions in your uh, uh, question. Mm -hmm. The first one is online. Clearly, we are an executive MBA program, and that means in our case that we really value the classroom teaching and the face-to-face -face teaching, the teamwork, mm -hmm. which also takes place really in the classroom or later on for some assignment. It may be online, but not the main teaching. So it's not an online program. But we have some elements in our program where we use online teaching. For instance, some of our professors, they really uh, use uh, a platform uh, which is online and uh, where they combine the in-classroom teaching with some online exercises or 
some chat rooms. Now, the second dimension is, can somebody from uh, uh, a very, very distant country also integrate the program? Yes, he or she can. We have some examples. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. um, around 75% of the participants, they are from Europe. But the rest, they are from other continents, from Africa, from America, from Asia. So as long as he or she is ready to travel, he or she can participate. Probably, if somebody is from a more distant uh, uh, part of the world, then either the itinerant track or the Berlin London track would be more simple to attend because it's offered in a more blocked way and that reduces your travel time. So clearly, yes, you're more than welcome. And let's also say it, we would be happy in the future to have even a little bit more participants than the 25% we have now from outside Europe. While we are in Europe, we would like to become even more global in the future. So uh, no reason not to apply. We are very happy uh, to welcome non-European students in our very European program. Great. I'm going to go to our uh, a couple of uh, web questions that we have in there. They're into specifics a little bit more. So one person that would like to know, can we know a little bit more about the interviewing process when, when you're in admissions? How does that work? Uh, what's the process? If you remember. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Uh, well, actually, the interview was with uh, three, three people. Uh, two people from the school and uh, an alumni as well. And actually, the interview was um, only to, to speak about, uh, about what, I, what I did, um, my, my current position, and who I, who I was. So it was as well some kind of personal, uh, personal uh, uh, question and why I wanted to, 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 to take part of this program. And as Sail said, uh, what would be my added value for this program, what I can bring to that program. Um, so it's as well some professional uh, question and personal question. Mm -hmm. So in my case, my interviewer was sitting right next to me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so basically, in my interview, they went through my CV. They asked me some questions mm -hmm. uh, with respect to the essays which I had written. And I think the major question which I already mentioned, the major question which was asked was, um, what is the added value I'm bringing to a classroom? So what experiences have I had uh, which bring value to a classroom of discussion as well? Mm -hmm. And perhaps an advice from our side, uh, both now from a professor in the interview and later on from a member of the final admission jury, be yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't want you to hide something because the interview is the best moment for us to see whether you fit to the program and it's also the best moment for you to see whether ESCP Europe is the right choice for you. And the best way of how to find it out is to be as natural as possible and to clearly discuss with the professor, the alumnus or the alumna in the jury, yeah, what you want to do, why you want to do it, and then we will know whether you are really a good candidate for us and you will know whether ESCP Europe is the best school for you. That's great. One more question re re relating to the same topic. Um, do you require um, letters of recommendation and who would be the right person to ask for a letter of recommendation when you're applying? Who's a good person to? Yeah, we uh, require two letters of uh, recommendation and it's very good to have letters of recommendation from your boss, for instance, from a former uh, uh, superior. It may also be a very important uh, client of yours. And again, it's not necessarily that we want uh, to have a referee stating that you are perfect in all dimensions. Sometimes it's even not credible if somebody takes outstanding in all dimensions. Why should you do an executive MBA if you were already 100% perfect. No, it should be realistic. And the person who knows you can sometimes also talk about your weaknesses. It's not that you have some weaknesses that we don't accept you. No, we accept you with your strengths and your weaknesses because that's why you're doing an MBA. There's something you still want to add, to add to your personality, to add to your knowledge, to add to your network. So 
apparently there's something missing. So that can be stated by the referee and you can also overtly talk about that during the admission process. Okay, thanks very much. We have about five minutes left. I have uh, a couple of uh, questions left. Um, my first question will be from the web and then it'll be kind of a general final question for everyone. So last question from the web we're taking tonight. Uh, do you provide career counseling throughout the program? I know that people are working, of course, but do you have a career services center yeah. as mm -hmm. part of the program? Yes. Can you explain what, what they do? Yeah. Uh, perhaps the, the first, the overall uh, uh, just framework, we have a career counseling in the program. Each of the participants gets uh, four hours of individual coaching and can choose his or her coach in whatever uh, country. And uh, second, it's also our alumni uh, organization mm -hmm. having yes. a uh, established a special service for executive MBA participants. Mm -hmm. And now perhaps you can uh, tell uh, <laughs> the audience a little bit more how it works. Yeah, of course. Uh, so it's, it's true that uh, from the alumni part, uh, there is a program completely full, I mean, very complete, uh, which uh, can help you to build uh, your your next step in your career, uh, in order to work on your CV and to to work uh, to prepare the interview and to think with you about uh, what would be the next step, what you should look for now. So it's definitely very complete and absolutely very very good. All the students who attend it uh, were very very satisfied. So I, I used the coach. Um, so. Um, it was it was a very interesting experience because I knew I wanted to do something different with an MBA, but I did not know really in what direction to go. So we actually went through my CV, analyzed what my strengths are, what my weaknesses are, what industry would be a perfect fit, mm -hmm. and then my we re, we rewrote my CV, and eventually even the contacts which were built to the companies or to the people in the companies, um, because of the strong alumni network, it was not with the HR department, but it was with somebody who was in a decision-making role in that company, so um, which really then opened the doors for me. So um, the, it's as Evidence said, the, 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 this career coaching in ESCP is very, very effective, and it's a very wholesome and integrated approach. Okay, uh, my last question uh, is for everyone, and it's in three words. What would you say is ESCP's unique proposition to EMB candidates. If you can think of three words that you would use to describe uh, ESCP mm -hmm. Europe, what would you, what word would you use? In international network. Mm -hmm. Three words? Yeah. I'd say unique, quality, and international. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything to add, Stefan? My three words <laughs> would be international. <laughs> Uh, diversity and highly customizable to the needs of each participant. Okay, so thank you very much. Um, it's about time to wrap up the live for today. Uh, thanks to Evelyn, Stefan and Sahil for participating. Thank you as well to our web audience. You can continue to send your questions to live at accessmba.com and someone from the SCP team will get back to you. Uh, please stay tuned to accessmba.com for our future online events and news. Uh, have a great evening, everyone, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.